Thank you for a really brilliant introduction. You've kind of done my job for me. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm Alice and this is Spencer. Hello. In case you didn't get that. Um, and we have been working at Lush um, over on Grafton Street. So next time you're passing by, drop in and say hello, because we would love to see you. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just talk you through um, the company, who we are, some of our products. And we really do want to kind of let you guys know that as a cosmetics company, we really are making a stand, just like Annabelle said, because it, um, it is really hard to attribute blame. Uh, when you look at these microplastics in the ocean, it's hard to attribute blame to a certain company or even a country sometimes. So um, yeah, we really want to get our message across. We're making a stand. We're going to get rid of um, things like plastic litter and things like microbeads in our product. We, we don't actually not that we're going to get rid of them. We don't have any in our products. So um, it was great to hear about your barcode app I mean, unfortunately, we don't have any barcodes on our products, but we wouldn't need to be involved in the database anyway because we don't have any microbeads in our product whatsoever. So you can come in and shop in our store, you know, all happy. So, um, yeah, the company began... There it is. That's so crazy. So the company began in 1994, and they set up in Poole in the UK, and they're still based there today. Um, currently, we have 900 stores worldwide, so we're a global company. Um, some of our products include our bath bombs, which I think we have a lovely picture of here. Yeah, so this is our big blue bath bomb. It's full of lovely seaweed and sea salt, so we thought it was particularly relevant. So it's great um, to relax with. It's really, really good for achy muscles. And then these are our shampoo bars, which you should definitely grab one of those on your way out. We have some to give you later on. Um, basically, they're condensed shampoo into a solid form. This means that we don't have to use any packaging. Um, and I'll highlight one in particular called Scenic, which, similar to the Big Blue Bath Bomb, we've used some lovely um, seaweed and sea salt, really, really good for giving shine and volume to your hair. And then, as well, we have our fresh face masks. So we're really proud of these. These are um, completely fresh, all fresh ingredients. A lot of people try to eat them in our store, but please don't do that. They're not ice cream. Um, so we have BB seaweed there in the front. And again, just like the other two products, full of lovely seaweed. We actually get it from Pool. We get it from a lovely man called Pete. He's great. Um, and it's tooth rack seaweed. That's always hard to say, but it's really, really great for your skin. Um, so the thing about the fresh face masks and a lot of our other products, we know where we're getting the ingredients. They're really high quality. Um, we can safely tell you that they haven't been you know, tested on animals. They're plastic free. Um, and you're getting a really high quality product that is completely ethical and completely safe for the ocean, which is what we're going to kind of talk about more in a while. Um, so as a company as well, we set up a kind of a set of mission statements for ourselves um, that we've really stuck to. So it's our We Believe mission statement, and I'm going to read you out some of our statements. So we believe in making effective products from fresh organic fruit and vegetables, the finest essential oils and safe synthetics. So all those ingredients, not only are they going to be very beneficial for your skin and your hair, they're going to be completely safe in our oceans as well. So we also believe in buying ingredients only from companies that do not commission tests on animals and in testing our products on humans instead. And this has worked perfectly fine for our company. And we would really encourage for that kind of thing to take off um, in the cosmetics industry. And we also invent our own products and fragrances. Uh, we make them fresh by hand using little or no preservative or packaging. And obviously this is very relevant for what we're talking about today. We have a lot of products that don't require any packaging. Um, and obviously that is great in kind of helping decrease the amount of not only litter that goes into our environment, but our marine litter more specifically. It was great to hear about all those people volunteering their time to collect all that litter on the beach. And so we really want to kind of, you know, not contribute to that and maybe save them a day's work, you know. So um, I'll hand you over to Spencer and he will talk you through our campaigns. So at Lush, we talk about and act on a lot of different environmental human rights and animal rights campaigns. And we just decided to pick out three there that are quite interesting and wide spectrum. Um, one that's quite cool is our Go Naked campaign that we did back in 2007. Um, a lot of our products are not packaged. Um, when you go out to the table afterwards, you'll see that we have lovely soap and shampoo bars. No packaging, no plastic wrappers, nothing like that. And basically, we just wanted to start a conversation with our consumers, our customers, on why do we need packaging on all these products, or why does there need to be packaging immediately 
on the product, like we could wrap up seven things in one bag, no problem. Um, so the Go Naked campaign basically was where both our products and our staff went naked. So I'll show you a little photo in a second, nothing too <laughs> crazy in there. Um, but our staff members had, went around with aprons that said, I'm naked, ask me why. And basically it was just trying to get the public involved and it was got stirred a lot of emotion. Um, Alice's mum was even saying that she remembered the Go Naked campaign. Very memorable. Yeah, yeah. very memorable. Um, one that we did last year, and we actually did in store in our shop as well, is the Great Ocean Aside. Um, and that was to do with deep sea bottom trawling. Um, so this was particularly a campaign to do with the UK. Um, a lot of French and Spanish ships do a lot of deep sea bottom trawling in the UK's waters. Um, and the UK is an area where there's a lot of diverse species of wildlife. Um, so basically, we were trying to raise awareness with our customers that this doesn't need to happen. There are other ways of fishing. You're contributing a lot to the devastation of coral reefs and lots of very distinct and diverse um, creatures that live at the bottom of the ocean. Um, so we had in stores, unfortunately not in our store, but there were live body art demonstrations. So some staff members volunteered to have beautiful paintings of different sea creatures painted on them in store. And again, very engaging. Customers come up and ask, what the hell are you doing? Um, but starts a talking point, which is really cool. And then one campaign that's very close to our heart, which we spearheaded across all of our Irish stores, is our Lush Says Yes, Yes Equality campaign last month. And by pure coincidence, we happen to have a lovely massage bar, which is jasmine scented, that says yes on it. So we decided to use this massage bar as part of a selfie campaign and an in-store informative campaign um, to encourage, like, Lush is a very, safe and open space. Our customers and our staff are free to express themselves however they want in our stores. And because we believe in human rights and equal rights, we were like, okay, so we got to inform the public what's happening, what they got to do. So that was basically our campaign. So I'll show you some photos. So top left, we have lovely Brandy Halls, who is our communications manager over in the US. Um, grabbing a lot of attention. Um, then we have another colleague member down at the bottom who I think we decided has a lovely squid painted on her, very effective photo. And then top right is Gary, Alice, Grace, and Barry, who had the yes pink letters, which were going around a lot of different Dublin landmarks. Um, it's great that we're now a landmark. Um, and just showing how active we were in our Yes Equality campaign. So I'm just going to kind of talk to you a little bit about where we are now after those amazing campaigns. So after our Go Naked campaign, um, we're currently at around 38% naked in our store. So um, that means that 38% of our products don't require packaging. Um, and this obviously decreases the amount of waste that we produce and that our customers produce. And it also decreases the amount of litter that's affecting our oceans. Um, and where possible, the packaging that we do use is 89% recycled, so again, it's, if it's something we have to do, we're going to ensure that we're doing the best job um, we can at using recycled materials um, that kind of comes back to even our black pots that we package most of our kind of you know, creams and um, hair products in. In the UK, unfortunately not in Ireland at the moment, in the UK there's kind of a closed loop system. So essentially, if you bring back um, five empty black pots, not only will we reward you with a lovely free face mask, um, they will be used again inside the company. So in Ireland at the moment, we're recycling the pots. You still get a free face mask, so you can all participate in that soon. Um, but in the UK, they have that closed loop system, which means that they're using pots that aren't virgins, that, are, that have been used before, and you know, we're making the most out of what we have already. Um, so obviously this kind of, uh, we're rewarding our customers being green, again, just like our campaigns, we're engaging our customers, we're engaging our followers 
to think about the products they're using and think about um, how much packaging they really have to waste. And you know, if they have to use it, they can always bring it back and it can be used again. So um, yeah, we also have a huge range of um, canvas bags and wraps. So we use, um, not wraps, you can see we wrapped up some lovely gifts on the right here. Um, so we would use some uh, recycled organic cotton wraps, we would use vintage reclaimed wraps, and essentially that's our form of gift packaging. And it's also a way of carrying your products <laughs> home. Uh, it's lovely and decorative, people really enjoy them. It's really, really nice at Christmas time to give someone something that they can re-gift or reuse themselves. Um, so yeah, it's a really great system and we feel very you know, happy that we're making these kind of creative inventions that you know, help our consumers waste less and um, help our oceans stay healthy. So I'll pass you over to Spencer. So Lush is a company kind of, as Annabelle has already mentioned, basically made a commitment that we wanted to ensure that the coasts, the waterways, the beaches were as clean as possible and that we weren't a contributing factor to that. Um, we've noticed some images have already been put up by the Five Geyers Institute, which is a favorite institute of ours. Um, and basically they went out and like kind of filtering through water and found lots and lots of microplastics. And these microplastics, are trillions of them, but they can't be contributed to single source, a single company, a single country, because they're, ju they're just floating out in the water. So by Lush as a company coming out and saying, we do not use any microplastics whatsoever in our products, it means that you can be assured that by using Lush products, you aren't contributing to the problem. Um, and this is a cool um, thing called purchasing power. So as a consumer, customers can choose what they will use and what they won't use, and basically that has an impact on the environment. Um, basically, our cosmetics have a conscience, um, like us, they like to think. Um, they all contribute to the global makeup of what is in pollutants and all that kind of thing. So we like to use natural products instead. Um, and what is quite shocking is that 90% of the kind of microplastics that are found in the ocean are contributed back to cosmetics companies, so they'll generally be the lovely microbeads that we hate. Um, and in an average other daily cleanser that ha uses microbeads, there'd be 300,000 beads in one product, so that's a lot of different microplastic particles all going out into the ocean. So even though we don't use you know, microplastics in our products, that doesn't mean we have to lose our sparkle. So if you've ever been into Lush, you know that we sell um, a lot of crazy bath bombs um, that produce amazing glitter effects in the water, and they're really, really fun. Um, originally, we were using PET glitters. We were using glitters that had plastic in them. But once we realized that this was washing back up, um, you know, it goes down your bath, it goes into the ocean, it's, it's so simple, and it just shouldn't, it just should, shouldn't be done. So we decided to just end it, just stop it, and like Annabelle was saying, a lot of other cosmetics companies have made statements upon statements that they will phase them out, and you know, even if they say that, we can't ensure that the alternative is going to be completely biodegradable, we can't ensure that what they're going to be using is actually going to be healthy for the ocean at all. Um, they're setting up a lot of kind of loopholes in the system that means they can say that they're using things like biodegradable plastics, but this actually just means that something is getting broken down you know, into more pieces. It's just replacing one problem with another. So obviously there's the micro bead and then there's the plastic glitter. So in January 13, that was when we decided to make an immediate stop. Um, and then instead we've used um, agar glitter and luster. So agar glitter is essentially just seaweed. I mean, essentially it's edible. So it's, it's laid out, it's completely flat, it's dried out, and then it's crumbled up really, really fine um, into a powder that not only um, you know, is completely beautiful in the water and looks like this, it's completely harmful for the sea because it's you know, made from a product that came from the sea originally. Um, and that's, you know, that's colored with food coloring. It's all completely safe and completely healthy for you and the ocean. Um, and as well, then we use the luster, which is essentially just ground up kaolin and mica, 
mica you know if you if you haven't seen it it's all around us it's in um, a lot of the buildings in front square in trinity where i go so it's the sparkly bit in granite essentially and that's just kind of ground up really really fine and mixed with kaolin and that's used as another kind of glitter in our products so yeah and as for exfoliators and that kind of thing we followed along Surfers Against Sewage, who had the Mermaid Tears campaign. So Mermaid Tears are microplastics in the water. Um, we decided to use different alternatives to plastic beads, which are almonds, sea salt, charcoal, polenta, all sorts of different things. And basically, these work as a far better exfoliator because they have irregular shapes that are much more abrasive on the skin, but still being nice and gentle. Whereas a perfect sphere made of plastic means that you have to use more product, essentially meaning that you have to buy more of a particular company's cleanser. So we thought that was a terrible idea, and basically we stopped doing it and switched over to other things. Um, and these lovely exfoliators are nice and gentle, and they're very, very effective. And here's a lovely picture of all the different microbead particles that are found when you trawl through the water. And our fantastic alternatives. So I think you've pretty much gathered what we were talking about. Um, just Lush as an environmental, humanitarian, and animal rights oriented company that we like to particularly think about our environment, our effect environment, and what we can do not to be harmful to the environment. And all our lovely alternatives that we've come up with. So thank you. <laughs>